This video is about monochromatic painting. In this case, we are taking a black and white picture of a photograph and creating a black and white version of it in watercolor. Um, we first start by drawing out the basic image that we need of the watercolor before we actually start painting it. I am drawing out the image of the barn using only very simplified lines. In this case, I started with sort of a square with a triangle on top and uh, have modified it a little bit so that it looks like a barn. I am also doing the same thing for our windmill and our tree. Very, very simple lines. Now we are adding the details to the background. What I'm doing are just drawing some guidelines here so that I will know where my paint will actually be. And I'm also drawing a few details so that it'll make it easier for me to actually go back in and paint these areas um, very specifically. Before we start, we must always tape the top and the bottom of our watercolor in order to keep our paper from rolling. This also keeps everything in place so that you don't have to worry about your hand getting in the way and moving things. So I'm wetting my watercolors down, making sure that they're moistened. We are only going to be using black, so I only take a little bit of black and some water. And I'm starting with my background first. My sky the farthest up at the top of the page, I'm painting it a black wash with water. Note how I will occasionally dab my paintbrush with a paper towel. If I get too much water, it's a good way to do that, to take that excess off. I'm also doing something that is commonly seen in most watercolors, where you will add a little bit of extra water to fade the colors. Anytime you get too much paint on there, just dry off your paintbrush. You don't have to rinse it, and you can actually pick up extra watercolor off of the page. Now, in this case, I allowed my watercolor to dry for a few minutes before I start the detail portion. If we should happen to paint on this before it dries enough, it will bleed too much within the picture plane and then we will just have a muddy mess. So what I'm doing is simply painting stripes across my barn because I want that as texture for my barn. And I'm also going in and outlining where the edge of my barn roof is. This creates a natural shadow. I can also go in and paint the little doors and windows within my barn. And I'm going to work a little bit on the roof. The roof needs to be slightly darker, but not as dark as the shadow that's underneath the roof. In this process, I am using a dry brush, meaning that my brush is completely dry. I am separating the bristles and I dip it into a mixture of black and water. And I am simply painting uh, dashes across the page with the brush. If you start running out of paint, you can always go back and dip some more into the paint, but never get your brush completely wet. You are better off going back in occasionally and maybe separating the bristles on your brush. This works best with a wider brush that has lots of little bristles. Notice that in the areas that I have painted across, the areas that I did the paint underneath um, shows up darker than the areas that haven't been painted at all. With my windmill, I'm keeping it very simple. It looks like a ladder, a triangular ladder, and I've made almost a um, flower at the top of it. I'm just simply adding a few details now to finish up my artwork and uh, we can let it dry and this is our finished product.